Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. Lon Paul here, and you're going to get your anomaly video this morning. Well, actually, it's morning for me. I have no idea what time it's going to be there for you, of course. So we're going to be checking out the anomaly uh, mission and see what's going on for the weekend. Normally, I come out with these videos on a Friday night, but I uh, had some other obligations that kept me from doing so. So we're doing it today. So thank you for waiting and being patient for the video for this weekend. We're going to be also having some uh, news updates and some ideas in regards to, well, we'll be talking about some news and some ideas in regards to the Liquidators Expedition. Um, been seeing some people speed running it and realizing that, yes, I guess it can be done in a shorter amount of time. I haven't gotten there yet, but yeah, uh, I spend a little less time being able to check out the speed runs on these and it takes me a lot longer to get to that point so it'll be a couple weeks for me before you'll see any speed run videos from me but that is what it is okay so let's get started um i'm happen to be in a space station here so let's go ahead and head out to the anomaly instead looks like a good spot to pop it up at there we go You know, I have to agree. I heard someone say the other day, it looks like the graphics and everything in No Man's Sky is crisper as well. Like sharper imagery, it's not as blurry as it used to be, and I have to agree wholeheartedly with them. Um, everything I'm seeing in here is just so much sharper than I seem to imagine or remember at this point. So I have to say they're doing a really good job with updating the game, and I think it's really turning into something new. So there's our blue icon indicating we have ourselves a mission ready at the Nexus. Let's go ahead and check it out. Um, looks like we have to collect activated emerald. Um, it is likely going to be an activated something. So you see I just exited and there's a reason for that. So if I go on my starship right now, I've got a really busy inventory in here of a lot of stuff in it as you can see. But one thing I usually keep in the inventory on my ships is I try to keep um, precious metals in here. So I do keep cad cadmium in here. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll even keep the other metals as far as emerald, activated emerald, cadmium, activated cadmium, things like that. So I like to double check my inventories to make sure I'm not carrying any of those things in here right now. Um, looks like I got some gold, pyrite. Uh, I don't see any of the activated minerals in here. Now, why am I checking that? That's a good question. Um, because if you happen to already have those minerals in your inventory, here you go, see? Right here. If you happen to have these in your inventory already, um, that can cause problems with these missions because you immediately complete it. Now, if that's what you're looking for, great. <laughs> but as you can see, that's probably not the best idea. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take what activated cadmium. It's just cadmium in here, I think, right? Regular cadmium. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my exosuit, and there it is. I'm going to roll down here. I'm going to take these, and I'm going to put them in my freighter instead. Um, now, my freighter isn't in the system, so it will just teleport to its inventory. We check the freighter right now. If it was in the system, you'd see a whole bunch of menu items up here to access the cargo containers that are, that are installed. They are not there. So this is going to be a very strange thing to do. So you're going to see me do something kind of odd here. If I keep them in the main inventory of the freighter, I still have access to them anywhere in the universe. or the, And I say universe, not just if my freighter is in the Euclid galaxy and I am in Isentum, it really doesn't make a difference. I still have access to that main um, inventory. So I'm going to go ahead out here, <clears throat> and as you're going to imagine, I'm going to go ahead and pull my freighter in. Here we go. Come to a stop real quick as the frigates all pop in. Now, you'll see I now have access to all the other items in the inventory. So let me scroll down here. We're going to take this and we're going to stick it in a different inventory. There, see? I have activated Indium in there as well. I always keep a lot of each item because you don't know when you're going to need it. See? Lots of this inventory I've got. I've got Indium, Cadmium, Copper and emerald. I've got all four of these elements in large quantities because you never know when you might need them. But they're in one of my cargo containers instead. So now what do we do? You dismiss your freighter. Bye guys. Take care. Have a good evening. Alright. Let's go back to the anomaly now. 
So it's most likely going to be telling us that we have to gather a mineral. Now, I don't know if they've ever fixed this, but every single time I've had a mission where you're going to gather min uh, a mineral, <clears throat> the mineral changes from what it tells you in the mission to the point at which you get to the system you're going to. So let's see if it does it again today. Maybe they fixed that, maybe they haven't. It's probably kind of low on the priority list of things that they were doing. But let's see what happens. Let's see if it's still Emerald, first of all. Okay, still says activated Emerald. We want 872. We'll get 1800 Quicksilver and a Mineral Compressor. I'm not sure how much value the Mineral Compressor is, but well, I guess we'll find out, right? And we also get about a half a million units, so that's pretty good, too. Let's start the mission. Let's see what happens. I'm very curious now. I'm sure you are getting curious, too. Unusual minerals. Off we go. Now, as usual, as you exit the anomaly, it's going to kick you into hyperspace to go to a new system. If you were doing things in the system you used to be in, then you're going to want to exit the anomaly once you've completed the mission one more time. Don't, don't go out to your mode select. Don't exit the game. Exit the anomaly so you can get back to the original system you started at. Alright, so let's see. Unusual minerals. That's going to direct me to a planet here in just a moment. Yep, see it changed. Activated Indian now. So we're in a blue star system. And it happens to be on this planet here. So as we head to the planet, I'm going to go ahead and scan it. I doubt it is undiscovered. I'm pretty sure everybody's discovered this planet by now. Um, ancient Bone, Star Bulb, Activated Indium, Paraffinium, Sodium. Looks like it is a pretty decent planet. It says rainy, but when you have activated um, anything, activated Copper, activated Indium, you're going to have a stormy system. And it's usually very powerful storms. A lot of lightning. Very extreme. And it looks like we have a storm going on as we speak. Now you see... Whoa, okay. Um, yeah, hello there. It actually directed me straight to a landing platform. That is hilarious. The landing platform is not necessary, but we'll use it. Scalding rainstorms. How scalding? Three hundred and twenty-five, twenty-six degrees. Not bad. I'd say that that amounts to scalding. Oh, good, good. So the temperature should drop back to uh, <clears throat> normal. Whatever normal is. All right, so it's directing us to where the activated indium is. Looks like we got a 305. That's pretty close. What about up here? 555. All right, I may go to that one. 192, huh? That's, that's an even closer one. All right, so we need 872, as you can see. Now, I have it in my freighter, but you'll notice that since I don't have access to that cargo container, it's going to let me do this. Ah, so the temperature dropped over 250 degrees. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Now, ah, interesting deposit. So this is going to be an opportunity for me to show you something very interesting about this. If you look closely at this deposit, you'll see that it has it had some highlights of other colors in it. Usually it doesn't mean it's very pure. So we're not going to get much out of this, probably not. Unless just that's reflections, we're going to find out in just a moment. Now, <clears throat> you have three settings on your terrain manipulator, so this is going to be a teaching, a teaching moment as well. Um, when you first open it up, you get a medium setting. It produces a hole about that big. I'm going to show you an example. So that's the hole it produces. If you hit your R button on your keyboard, you're going to go to a smaller setting, and it'll produce a hole this big. As you can see, much smaller. A little more defined, right? And then finally, if I go up and up one more time, you'll get your largest setting. This is for digging tunnels. Now, you can fit through here, obviously, but you can also, pardon me, fit through this one as well. It's just a little tighter. Good for hiding from sentinels if you don't want to fight them, because they have a little bit of a harder time navigating the narrower tunnel. You cannot get into this one. Why am I showing you this? Because you gather more resources depending upon which setting you have it set to. With almost every single single mineral out there, if you set it to the smallest setting, 
you will gather more minerals with each blast. So let's see what we get from this. It looks like it's a pure one and that it was just a reflection. Because what should happen is as the activated indium at the top right is increasing, you should get silicate deposits out of it as well. <clears throat> so this one's pure. This is good. So we're going to gather it as we can. We're going to have to go through a couple of these deposits. Of course. I have to recharge everything right now because it wants me to recharge all the stuff that I have in my inventory. Just ignore that. There we go. Silicate powder is the best thing to recharge your terrain manipulator with because you can get it in such large quantities all over the place it's easy to come by just by burrowing into the ground for a little bit. So that's what I usually recommend using. Um, so while we're doing this, ooh, that's a nice starship. A little bit of uh, ADHD there, sorry. Um, we'll take a look at that later. So as we go through this, we will be gathering this up. And the, at the bottom right corner, as it drops in and out of your screen, it will give you an update of how well you're doing with your with your uh, collection. So we've got a little over 200 now, 250. Okay, so this is one of those systems that the storms come frequently. So make sure you're protected from hot weather on this system. Make sure you have the right upgrade. Even a C-class upgrade from the vendor at a space station can provide you with enough protection to get these done. You can use either phosphorus in order to... to uh, get yourself better protected from the weather and elements, or you can use an ion battery, or you can use sodium. Usually one of those three will keep this thing updated. So as you can see, extreme storm. And you see I'm gathering quite a bit from this one deposit. I may not get 800 from it, but I'm going to get close. I'll get really close. Getting a little difficult to see, too. The wind is really kicking in. Now, if you don't have the protection, if you can't afford to get one, if you have low nanites, burrow. That's weird. We got a storm within a storm? I've never had that happen before. Burrow a hole through the deposit. Okay. Make it big enough. There we go. And sit inside of it. And you can see at the bottom left corner, I'm no longer affected by the weather. And you can do it this way. So this is another way you can gather up the indium you need. You'll be gathering more silicate, but you're going to need that anyway, right? For recharging, so you might as well gather it up. It's no big deal. And you can actually carve it from the bottom and work your way up. A couple different ways you can do it. Find the way that works best for you. That's interesting. I just realized, I don't know if anyone's noticed this before, but if you look at my multi-tool, it has one of the glyphs on it. It has the boat. Isn't that interesting? I've never noticed that before. I don't know what's going on here, but the storm system seems to be glitching out. It keeps resetting for some reason. Well, it looks like this deposit's going to give us everything we need. Smaller deposits will just ma uh, make you go elsewhere to get the rest. My suggestion, by the way, too, in case you've never gathered activated indium, this is a blue star system. If you don't have the uh, ability to go to a blue star system yet because your save is so new, because you're just starting No Man's Sky and you've never been to one of these systems before, at the very least, try to hit up the space station. You will have access to the system even though you don't have the warp drive capability to do so. So you'll be able to come to the system by usually the teleporter module and come to these systems anytime you want. So you can gather up indium and activated indium if you ever need it. And also if you find an unusual planet that you like. Alright, so it looks like I got everything, right? Alright, so I'm going to go to a larger setting and I'm going to gather up the rest so I can get extra. That's the second. I think I mentioned it earlier, but I recommend getting as much as you can because you can always use activated indium down the road a ways. It used to be activated indium was one of the most expensive items in the game, mineral-wise, and that you could get a lot of money for it, but they haven't since nerfed that, and our activated indium farms are no longer uh, worth their weight, and a lot of them have gone abandoned. See, now I've dug above me, so I'm now exposed to the storm. 
So I'm just going to gather up the rest of this real quick. A little physics break there because it doesn't know what to do with it. Alright. And we're done. Alright, we must have got about at least a thousand out of this one, so that's pretty good. Alright. Now, a lot of these storms you got to be careful with. Because the storm itself may be bad by its in, in its own right. You know, here we are at 321 degrees. It's it's bad enough and scalding enough that you can it can hurt you. But occasionally they'll have like lightning storms or meteor storms or even tornadoes. Tornadoes can really hurt. Okay. You see my thermal protection is now falling. Let's see what we need to charge it back up. Phosphorus or batteries? It will not take sodium, so I was wrong about that. So you can either use a battery or you can use phosphorus. You recharge your shield and it brings it back up and you're in good shape. Okay. Let's go ahead and head out. And it says it's got a depot it's going to send me to. And what we want to do... Oh, it's already located it for us. You see it's over there on the right. There we go. Heading out. Looks like it's about four minutes away. I made it three and a half, but that's still going to be a little bit too long. we got lightning in the distance. I don't think... We might be able to pulse drive to it. Let me see. Yeah, we can. Alright. Occasionally with some of these missions when you're delivering, quote-unquote, the goods, it might be another landing platform, in which case you're fine. But if it turns out to be just like a little campground type thing, where there's a character, an NPC walking around, then you may not have the ability... You may have to fight actual creatures. Is this an approximate location? Yes, it is. Okay. Approximate locations means you're going to have to look for where it is. So if start by scanning and see if you find anything in the direction it happens to be. Turn around, scan in another direction. Looks like we got a building there. We'll check that in a moment. And last direction. All right, building there. So it's probably one of these two buildings. I'm thinking this one, maybe? This one seems to be pretty far. Yikes. Okay, went a little too quick there. Plus, it's so foggy. Can't see anything. All right, so that is an actual building. Or set of buildings. Let's go over here and see what this one is. Can't see it. Too much fog. That is also just a, a, a small building. Alright, let me go ahead and land and we'll take a look around. I don't see anybody around, so we must be looking for something else. So when you hit your F button and you scan, it'll tell you how far things away they are. So it tells me to go to the right. Now it's telling me to go straight. Whoop, nope. Okay, now it says straight. We go this way a little bit, it'll tell us to go to the left. So it's going to be somewhere in this general direction. Uh, since it's 825, that's quite a distance. I'm going to go ahead and take off one more time, especially now that the storm's clear. I'm going to do one more scan. I don't think that's the building up there, but let me go a little straight this way and take a look. Now that we can see. You know what? It might have been this building. Let's check it out. Hold on. Maybe it will be here. Usually there's an NPC or a landing platform. Let's see. Nope, it's now a thousand that way. So we're looking something over in that general direction that is not showing up on our radar. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> Alright, so somewhere over here. Do one more scan. That could be it. That could be it. And it didn't show up before. I missed it in the storm. Alright, so there you are. Landing platform. So we don't have anybody to fight. It's going to be a landing platform you're going to. And if you just do your scan, see? It's sending us in there. Good deal. So it happened to be a landing platform. We just couldn't see it in the stinking storm. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're at the terminal. Delivery lockbox prepared. Accessing. This must be Polo's secure lockbox. I should deposit the item and register my delivery. You notice it tells us to deliver 750, which is different than the amount it wanted you to pick up. It wanted you to pick up 875, I believe the, the amount was. So you get extra anyway. But we're going to go ahead and deliver it. 
the reprocessing success and how much did we end up with let's check we end up with an extra 400 out of that deposit so that's pretty good i mean we ended up with 1200 from just one deposit so i'm really proud about that plus you're getting some activated indium the great thing about activated indium and i'll show you this next is if you have a refiner which i've been doing some nanite collecting so i'm going to go ahead and pull them real quick and charge this back up there we go if you put your activated indium in here it is very useful item is that it? Nope, that's dioxide. Cobalt. We'll get there. Hold on. It's in here someplace. It's in reverse order, and I never understood why it does that. You put this in here, you're getting a 1 to 4 ratio for chromatic metal. So activated indium being one of the big, one of the best elements to use to convert into chromatic metal, if you need more chromatic metal. So this could come up in very handy for a deposit for you, rather than just purchasing from space stations. So keep that in mind. Okay. So we're done here. Um, let me go ahead and just get my um, nanites burning through real fast before we let you go. There we go. On our way. All right. And I am going to head back out to the, to the anomaly and get that going. Where is that ship? I haven't seen it again. really wanted to see what that ship was like. Because they do have some nice fighters in here if you like some fighters. Um, Explorer is pretty good, but I'm not seeing that particular starship again. That would be kind of a nice ship to take a look at, but you know what? In the interest of getting this mission moving along, let's go ahead and head back. Maybe when you come to the planet, you can check out the ship if you really like to see it. Had that nice uh, hot rod nose on it. That looked pretty, pretty cool. Alright, so we're going to call in the anomaly. Point. Head back to the anomaly. Now, most of you should be able to do these missions without any problem. I mean, the terrain manipulator is something that you acquire early on in the new, in your new playthrough. So, as long as you have that and you have access to the anomaly, you get the terrain manipulator before you get access to the anomaly. As long as you have access access to the anomaly, you should be able to do that mission. And it's a good way to acquire a lot of Quicksilver and a lot of credits in this case, and usually a very interesting item. So let's see what we get. Okay, we're going to get that mineral compressor. There it is. And we completed the mission. That's pretty much it. And before we leave, mineral compressors work looks like it's worth uh, 75000 so that's a unit that you can build on your own. It requires a hydraulic wiring um, in order to craft these. So that's something you can learn through the uh, vendor in the back, which we'll show you real quick. Let's do that. Let's turn this into a 101 training video of anomalies. So the anomaly is a very interesting place to be. You've already, probably, if you have access to it, you've been given a tour. So you'll know this area back in here, where you get your upgrades and stuff like that. Over at this terminal here in the middle is your synthesis laboratory. Most of you will jump in here and look at these and go, oh, okay, I need to get those. But if you look at the top right, you'll see there's a menu item that allows you to go from left to right. And if you go over here, you're going to get your valuable products. If you look closely, you're going to see that there's all kinds of neat things in here that you can acquire and build on your own. Um, you'll see that this item doesn't seem to be present in here that I can see either. So I'm going to be doing a little more research to find out, yeah, where did that one come from? Because I don't see it in here. So this is not an item that's a normal item that you can make. So apparently we can, any of us can make it at any given time. So that's a very interesting thing. But you'll notice that some of these items are worth a little bit when you start creating them. But your most expensive items you can make are the, um, pardon me, the stasis device or the I believe it's the fusion igniter if I remember correctly so the stasis device is a very expensive device <clears throat> and the fusion igniter is as well which require all kinds of different items to make as you can see so in order to get these you gotta make a circuit board and a superconductor here's your superconductor in order to make these you have to have liquid explosive and fusion accelerant so you need these over here to make them so you do have to acquire all these and it requires a lot of elements to make them but when you get one of these stasis devices they're very expensive devices and we'll show you that in just a moment 
So here's where your upgrades are gotten from. Now what do you do with that Quicksilver? And we'll touch base on the items that you can get as well. So let's jump down here to our Quicksilver vendor. Now, as you know, with the expedition and everything going on, you get your expedition rewards here as well. But your synthesis companion over here will give you, you know, be able to create exotic items from Quicksilver. So Quicksilver up here is used as a third type of currency, just like nanites, just like credits. So, or units as these are called for some reason, because everything's called units in this game. So you have all kinds of items you can get. Looks like we got the tier one, uh, which we can get right now. Um, looks like I may already have it at this point. Um, so we'll be taking a look at it. So these items that we're getting in here are, <clears throat> are these items in the expedition. But you can get other things in here. You can get fireworks, you can get uh, decals, statues. And if you look at some things, you can get some bill spading. No, I said that wrong, let's try that in English. Base building parts. You can get gestures, you can get appearances, which will include uh, armor and stuff like that, things for your pet, starship trails, you've got figurines you can put in your ship, which do give minor boosts to certain items within your ship, trails, as you can see, more stickers, visages, these are things that you can change your character to look like if you wish, and there's your armor. The armor is, is a facade, it does not give you any extra protection, but it looks cool, let's put it that way. So these, this is where you'll find all this. Now, if we go back into the, synth into the Synthesis Companion, it gives you an item on where to, you can learn Quicksilver. It shows you where you can get your Expedition Rewards and Twitch Rewards. So if we go into number three, you see that we can get all kinds of items. I can get all these items now if I wish, which I'm going to go ahead and unlock these. See? Because they're available to me from that. It does not come out of your Quicksilver, but it's Expedition Rewards that you get along the way. So, and I'm going to go ahead and keep getting a few of these. There we go. Including the decal. I'm loving the decal. The banner, absolutely. And we got the Adrift stuff in here, which I haven't collected just much yet either. So there's all kinds of things I haven't collected in here that I can still get. Finally, Twitch. Twitch drops. When you get Twitch drops, you can get them here at the number four spot. I've, collect, I've gotten all the things from the latest Twitch drops, so I can collect these anytime I want, including... Um, the multi-tools and eggs and ships and things like that. But you have to have room in your inventory in order to get these. Keep that in mind. Okay, so we're done there. That gives you an idea. You change your visage up here if you wish. There you go. You can change it at this platform over here in the corner, which you probably have already built one at your base by now. So you can change your appearance in here if you wish. So if I want to, I can go to my backpack, and I can now change it to the, um, the Chitin flight pack if I wish. Which I'm going to do temporarily, because I'm just curious about how it's going to work. You do also have fusion trails and stuff like that. Um, I think it'll look different. I'm definitely not going to put that on there. Uh, and no, no, that just isn't right. Scorching would be great. Lightning would be interesting. Reality glitch. You know what I like, though? I like the plasma trail. I think that's going to look neat on this, rather than the fusion trail. So let's go with the plasma trail on this this time. And then I'm going to change it. Oh, is the color in there? Primary colors, markings. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know it had that. That's pretty, pretty neat. Interesting. I like that. I'm going to go with that. Okay, and you got uh, you got capes you can put on yourself as well. Now, my colors are primary purple, black, and sometimes a little bit of gold, but it's only giving me two colors here, so I'm going to leave it there. And there we go. So that is my new flight pack. Pretty neat. I do like it. I do wish wings would pop out of the sides like a lot of people have been suggesting, so maybe that's something that Hello Games will do down the road a ways. So we're going to exit here, the facility here, and we're going to show you how that goes and how you can get back to your original system. And then I'm going to show you one more thing in regards to those items we were talking about building. So you have access to that, and you can download. There's plenty of places online, especially Reddit, that you can find access to menus and stuff like that on how to build everything. That I usually like to keep open on the side when I'm doing those kind of gestures. Now, so here you go. We, as soon as we exit the anomaly, it's going to take us back to our system. It does not use any of your hyperdrive juice at all. Or hyperdrive fuel, I should say. 
So it just does it automatically for you. It's kind of a bonus. And as we exit, we're going to pull in our freighter and I'm going to show you a little something in the cargo. There we go. Back to where we began. And I'm going to pull in my freighter over here. Get rid of that screen there. And then slow down. All right, so we're going to check the inventory because I want to show you something real quick here. We got, I, I have a lot of stuff and I've labeled all my uh, my areas in here of stuff that I can acquire. This area contains all the crafted attack and upgrade parts that you can get. And you'll see that these fusion items here, I'm going to go ahead and just get it down to one item. So the fusion igniter is worth 15.6 million. That's pretty good. That's pretty good price. A stack of them is going to go for obviously 312 million units. And you're probably like, oh my god, that's a huge amount of stuff. That is correct. It is a huge amount of items that you can get. Um, and, it, and it's so valuable to actually have these items. But you're going to see that there's other items in here that could be equally as worth just as, just as much that you can acquire on your, on your own. The stasis devices are by far one of the most expensive items in the game. They're worth 15 million a piece, whereas these are worth also 15 million. So these are the ones that are worth the, that are the most valuable. The stasis device and the other one. So a whole stack of these is going for 312 million, as you can see. Both of them will be worth that much. So by making these on your own, they actually don't cost you a whole lot to make them. In the end, you get a lot more money out of them from each one of these units than you do when you put the, than the money you're putting into them. So having these will give you the the option, the ability to increase the amount of items you, uh, the amount of credits you have in your inventory. And trust me, while you're looking at the 4.1 billion that's up here, you can go up to about 4.2 and a quarter. Uh, four point, yeah, four and a quarter billion is I think what you max out out up here. Um, you can go through that money really, really fast. So I usually keep a, de a decent amount of the stuff on hand, as you can see, along with other items that I think I can use. And that's how I have everything organized here. So, anywho, so that should take care of us for today. Let's go ahead and land at the at my freighter. There we go. And there you are. Excellent. So we're going to call it quits here for this one. If you have questions, by all means, drop them in the comment section down below. Um, I am one of those particular content creators who always respond to questions. So if you have a question regarding the anomaly video that you've just witnessed, any questions about how you do something or something wasn't explained in better detail, please let me know and we'll go ahead and I'll reply back to you and either tell you how to do it or I will produce a new video to show you how to do it. And we'll go from there. All right, folks, so we're going to call it here. Thank you again for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Really appreciate the support in this area. It really does help out the channel quite a bit. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.